140th video, well, in this series, and instead of taking a look at a VCR, that would have a look at this thing, Bron Color. It's a photo flash, fairly hard out type, bit more substantial than this kind of thing you see. Typically on cameras, well, on very old cameras maybe, a little bit gruntier, less battery changing. But has similar issues. You might find one of these old camera flashes and think, oh, that'll be great on my SLR. Only to find as soon as you attach it, uh, the camera hot shoe is now burnt out and will no longer work. Because these older flashes usually have a very high sync voltage, the voltage between those two pins there and there that get connected together to fire the flash. You measure it with a multimeter, if it's more than about 12 volts, don't connect it to your camera, otherwise you'll probably blow it up. Because the older cameras, it was just a little two little contacts that got pushed together when the shutter opened, but in modern cameras it's some kind of transistor or FET or maybe a triac type thing. If it's not a triac, it won't be rated at high voltage and you'll blow it up by putting on one of these older flashes. Sometimes you get lucky and the sync voltage in them is really low, other times you're not. Anyway, we're here to look at this thing, which has came with this big reflector and some uh, brackety things that I've removed because I did take this apart some time ago to see what the deal is and I've never tried it tried it out but it's it was pretty dodgy inside so probably best we don't so the model is a C70 C70 240 volts 50 Hertz 500 VA made in Switzerland and so it's missing the modeling lamp, like the halogen bulb, which would normally go there to provide a bit of light to the subject so you can get it aligned properly and see where the light's going to fall. But it does have the flash tube, which is the important thing, which is just sitting there because I did have it out before I just put it into show. Uh, xenon flash tube bit manky at the ends. It's got a kind of yellowy tint to it, which would be the UV blocking coating. No idea if it works. This one's only, only, yeah, only rated at 200 watt seconds or 200 joules. Yeah, these kind of deals can go up to sort of three kilojoules, two or three, depending on a lot of things. We'll have a look at some bigger ones soon because I've got a whole bunch of much bigger ones ready for us to have a play with but that'll wait till later and we're gonna look at this one today you can see already we're in for some fun because there's some residue dribbling down there and i know what that's come out of and so this on the back has uh, what i assume is a power switch a zero half and one yeah, so it must have half power full power which probably changes the voltage that it charges the capacitors up to, I presume, perhaps. It'll be the sync input there. I don't know what that type of plug is. I don't have that on any of my other flash equipment. I guess that's a test button. Um, power or ready light. 6.3 amp fuse. Blown, so yay, that's not going to work. And then the switch here which I think will be for the modeling lamps, like off, on, and probably pulse, maybe, so that it will give a flash once the flash is ready to go. That's a standard feature that, or the, the modeling light will go out until the flash is charged up, so that you know. All right, so let's slide this off and take a look. You can see some fun things have happened inside this thing. This has been sitting around for a few years now, waiting for this moment. Look what we've got here. Some it says 12 ohm resistors with very corroded legs, and the corrosion's coming through to the other side of the board. Why that is? Some kind of diode, maybe? 
seems to be a diode. That insulated wire there will be the trigger output from the trigger transformer. Looks like trigger transformer is there, that block thing. There's a little uh, thermostat switch thing there. So yeah, the problem is the that halogen bulb gets really hot and that can burn things so yeah if that plate heats up too much then that will switch it off presumably might switch off everything possibly so the switch here like a fancy kind of industrial control panel style switch three capacitors across there probably configured with several diodes to make voltage doubler and some Oh yeah, it's the type of those good old reefer capacitors. Reefer? The type that's a snubber, so it's got the capacitor and a resistor built into it. Look at that. Those good old things. Those ones look like they haven't let go yet. Have not parted company. However, the ones on this side Those look all right. Wow, well, they don't look all right, but they haven't exploded yet. They probably would if we turned this on now. But on this side, looks like someone's had a go at this. Maybe that's the main line filter. And so there would have been two wire caps there to earth, ground. You can see the green wire there, green and yellow. And someone's replaced it with just some generic little not Y-class capacitors. Wow, that's very dangerous. So I guess someone got this thing going again after those original capacitors let rip. By putting in some not safety rated capacitors. So we should just cut those out now because that's very dangerous to have those in there. So they're not rated to be going between line and earth. That's good. It'll work all right without them. It's just noise suppression. This Schaffner thing there, I guess that's a common mode choke. So, how do we get this apart more? Looks like what we need to do is undo three screws there, which go in those shafts, and then this stuff here, which seems to be held by some clips, should. Um, just release. Who knows if this thing's going to be going back together. It has got there, that was on it originally, a little thingy there, which presumably is a, what do you call that thing, a optical slave, like a photodiode thing, which can pick up the light from another flash that's firing to fire this one. Maybe that's what that switch controls. Don't know. The other thing that's going to happen with this is the the flash capacitors, special type of low leakage, high voltage, high impulse type capacitors. They're the right type for photo flashes. They'll probably go bad as well and cause big problems. Oh, they do go bad. They get leaky. So when you plug in a flash that hasn't been used for quite a long time, then you find smoke comes out of it. Oh, look at all that good stuff in there. Hmm. Boom thingies. Like hand drawn, probably hand etched circuit boards. Oh, nice and juicy. Presumably that thing's a triac used for driving the modeling lamp. Or it might be the glow prevention. That'll have to be somewhere. The thing that stops the charging when you fire the flash so that the uh, the flash tube has a chance to extinguish. All kinds of stuff doing this. You have to cut off these cable tires to help trace out the wires not really aiming to restore this thing 
you just have a look at it. There are plenty of other flash equipment, photo flash equipment. So it looks like yeah, the power cord comes in there and then it's stripped really long, goes over to here. I feel like this isn't the original power cord. So it goes X caps, common mode choke, another X cap. Then it goes to these two wires here, and those two wires. So dirty and gross. And I guess those will go into the switch. Brown and orange. And I think it comes all the way up to here. I spend a long time trying to trace this thing out. Do a big clive on it. I have got time to bother with that. And it goes all the way over to here. Oh yeah, up to that thermal trip thing. Okay. And then it'll come back down on that wire. Because the other one goes up to there. That also goes to some diodes there. Pretty sure there should be a switch involved in this somewhere. And that's where that or other orange wire coming back from the thermal trip goes to. Goes into the switch here. And there's a wire from the switch going to a fuse. And from the fuse back over to here. Great. Oh, these caps aren't actually secured to this board. They're just um, like pushed through it and then they have tag terminals which then have wires coming off them and it seems like these two caps are in series and then this one here is separate which is probably used for the you know, charging like a voltage doubler yeah see that seems to be a regular that's interesting it says AC electrolytic capacitor for intermittent use only, can is not isolated, which is interesting because it's very close to those ones. Although those ones have a plastic sleeve over them. Right, whereas these ones, the two outer capacitors, it says there on it, for photo blitz elco, 1650 microfarads, 360 volts. Okay, so those will be joined in series, Fraco brand, because each end of those caps in series, one terminal from that and one terminal from that, is there and there. One of them also goes over to this thing, which is maybe the charging input, some kind of charred remains of a diode. Oh, okay, that goes to the trigger circuit I think or something related to it there's a thing there I think it's a relay oh maybe they use a relay to tell it when it's allowed to charge or not like the relay will click off when um, the flash is fired so that the charger gets stopped and wires are very burnt through the problem is those diodes there are so crusted over from the capacitor exploding that like those Y caps exploding that it, it I can't tell which direction they go in okay I'll come back with a bit of information once I've studied this a bit further all right I had a go at this thing and um, try to work out what's going on it's a little bit weird and I did mess up earlier when I was looking at it you can see there there are two terminals there which go to this quite high powered diode thing and what that actually does is it means that this thing can operate at two power levels with that switch because it's either that diode blocks it so you're either charging only that capacitor or you're charging both capacitors but when you're discharging into the flash tube here trigger transformer and all that business ionizes the gas causes it to go to low impedance discharges the capacitors across the two terminals makes a bright light when you're discharging it always discharges both capacitors because that one will discharge through the diode so the charging circuit 
because those capacitors are effectively in parallel, all it is is a rectified mains, because they're 360 volt caps, and this is a 240 volt rated thing, so that's going to be about 360 volts when it's rectified. That middle cap there was a bit confusing, because I thought that was involved in a voltage doubler, but it's not. I think it's just doing current limiting, that's what it looks like, so let's have a go here. So we've got phase, goes through a fuse, and then those two resistors are in parallel, so that makes 6 ohms. Then on the other side there's neutral, and then there's an arrangement, we've got that cap there, is in series, so that also has a resistor across it, which I think is just like a bleed type thing, whatever that is, it might be quite low resistance. I feeling that's just to let a lot of current through to start with and then tail it off for limiting the rate that this can charge, kind of like that it can charge these. So then there's two diodes round opposite ways, but then there's diodes so they point together down to neutral then, off that, there is one side of this, which side is it? That side goes to there, but this side, there's two more diodes, one directly connects, and the other one connects through part of that, that rotary switch there. No, oh, I got that wrong, completely wrong. That one di connects directly to there, not that, and the other one connects to here via the switch. So you're always charging that one from that path, or that path, depending on which direction the AC cycle is in. And when that switch is on, when it's in the final position to one rather than half, that one's closed as well. So you're also charging that capacitor as well as that one. This is good old tractor feed paper golden tone thought we'd keep things old school with this it's probably the most exciting part of the video is that it's seeing some of the old school paper yeah what i thought was going on originally was what you'd see like in other types of flash like the ones that run 120 volts or ones that use much higher voltage would have either this or a multi-stage version of this where it's a, a full wave voltage doubler where the neutral connects to the center point between two capacitors and then you're charging each capacitor as though it was connected across the full line voltage and then they discharge in series. It's what's in computer power supplies when they have that little switch on the back for 120 volts that joins that up, whereas normally they'll function, and um, have I drawn that right? I don't know. Yeah, it bypasses the other two parts of the full bridge rectifier when you join the neutral onto the zinc point. Do I need to clarify that? Let's see. So normally, and then, so that's your main DC bus, 350 volts, whatever. And when that is 230, 350 volts is a full wave rectifier. This path, or this, have I drawn it wrong? Yes, of course it's wrong. No, because that would be a short circuit. It is like this. It goes down there. Oh, I've just joined those around the wrong way, so that's positive and that's negative. That's why it's so confusing. Yeah, so when you... this... we're saying that's phase, that's neutral. And when you join up that switch to um, make it 120 volt input, you're joining that point onto there, so that those diodes are now not involved and you're passing through there or through there. Anyway, that's a thing for another day.
for another video. I've already done the video. So that's how this thing works. It's got a current limiting capacitor, which limits how much charge per half cycle of the mains can get into these one or both of those capacitors. They both discharge every time. So if that one doesn't have any charge in it, then it's only that one. That's how you get the half power. Because of that, they had to put that quite grunty diode in because it'll be a few hundred amps pulse when the flash tube fires. There is a relay involved, and I think I might have omitted that there, which, I don't know, this thing is confusing. But the other thing that happens <laughs> is all over the place. The modeling lamp, the tungsten halogen bulb that goes in there, it, that is a light dimmer circuit there, there's a diac and some capacitors and things, there's a little filter so it's not so noisy on the mains and depending on the position of the switch here the circuit is powered by either I think it's that wire or that purple wire and that chooses different resistors so it will change the charge rate of I think that 0.1 mic cap there so that will change the time is that right? no I think it's that one there those are just filters for the peeling apart snobbers it's that one there so depending on where you power it from either of those it will charge that little cap through different resistors which means that the diac will break down a different part during each mains high half cycle to trigger the track at a different point so the brightness of that light will reflect the half or full mode of the flash great and that I didn't look into as hard as the trigger circuit work. Have a look at that now. Trigger transformer there. It's got two other wires which go to here in that that yellow color and blue. So the blue one is basically off of that, but through two resistors. There's two resistors, then that goes to one side of the trigger transformer, which I presume is that, and then the yellow side is a capacitor. And on the other side of that, there's two resistors, and it goes to, I think, that point there. Yeah, so that cap there is actually up here. Oops cap was it two resistors again i think so since there's four there and then it goes there onto that dc bus so that's i yeah that'll that i don't know is that a four terminal thingy or not i think it is the other side's just earth so yeah that's not together like i had it there it's actually just to the frame, so the flash pulse is just... <laughs> so what's going to happen? So this whole circuit here, its only job is to short those two wires together. That's all it does. It'll be some kind of track or SCR somewhere on this board. One of those um, two ninety-two thingies. So it's it joins across the capacitor, across the capacitor to there, and it's basically just a switch. So the power that's across the capacitor, the main flash capacitor some small amount of that goes through this path charges this capacitor up here and then when you want to fire the flash you just join the other end of the capacitor to the other end of this coil and then the pulse of current that comes out of that capacitor through there will induce a much higher voltage pulse on this secondary which has way 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 more turns a huge number of turns and that will create a electric field basically near the flash tube with reference to the middle work in this case the ground wire coming off of it which goes back to the frame 
it's a, it's producing a very strong like a sharp rising electric field between that which is the center terminal a small bit of wire that's wrapped all the way around the tube and this metal work if you're sitting near it and that ionizes the gas and causes the conduction between the two electrodes and the flash fires and then I believe it will trigger that relay there to turn off the charge circuit using something I didn't put on there I didn't really trace that bit out anyway you've got to stop the charger when you trigger the flash because otherwise well maybe they're just relying on that the impedance of that probably not because this is a pretty powerful unit just don't know what those things are this is 0.68k that capacitors just missing something here another wire that goes around all the way around to over here very roundabout way not sure exactly but i th i can't be bothered trying to trace that out because i'd have to work out what the terminals that relay are but yeah it will be something that can stop the charging when the flash is fired and before it's ready to fire and I think that's set by a threshold of that trim pot there a glow prevention so it says it stops the tube from glowing oh there we go now we can work out what the what the arrangement is there it could just inhibit the triggering nah, it needs to do more than that and so it's basically between those two there's something in here in that part of the circuit because I've drawn that as that as the rotary switch anyway yeah that's that's what you get you've got to inhibit the flash firing until it's ready and you've got to stop the charger when you fire the flash to stop the tube from continuing to arc over and not extinguishing all right there you go, we're going to leave it here, that's a Bron Color C70 teardown and a bit of an investigation into it and I don't particularly want to try and get this thing going because probably those caps are going to let loose and it's also quite gross and dirty and I've got a few other flash pieces of flash equipment to have a look at, some of them some nice units that I've been using or were using when I was doing photography stuff previously and I've got a bunch of them to do a teardown of because I just because I just got them from a junk e-waste place just so we can have a look at them so that'll be coming up at some point stay tuned till next time and it's probably not going to be any less rambly but there you go probably go back to VCRs for a bit maybe I don't know Everything's very hectic and I just decide at the last minute what's going to happen.